Hi, and welcome to Music Calgary's Sound Off Summit Back on Track series. We acknowledge that we are on the traditional territories of the Treaty 7 Nations in southern Alberta and the Métis Nation of Alberta Region 3. Thanks for tuning in and enjoy the panel. Hello and welcome to Music Calgary's Back on Track series. Natalie, thank you so much for speaking with us today. You're kind of the perfect person to be speaking to about this because we're all learning about getting up back on track after a, a challenging couple of years. And you, in my opinion, are the queen of strategic planning, especially with the focus on artists. So thank you so much for being here today. And to kick things off for our viewers that might not know who you are and your background, could you fill us in a little bit about Natalie Kleinschmidt? Sure. I saw that you had described me as the advocate, the coach, and the friend of artists. And I think that's a really good description of who I am today. What got me here, though, was a funny little path that started as an English teacher in Paris that led me to doing communication and then business training with multinationals until I reached a point where I realized multinationals were probably not going to save the world, but artists might. I'd always loved artists. In fact, it's not a secret anymore because I talk about it, but I'd fallen in love with a piano player in a band in Paris when I was 20 years old. And the only way I could find to be useful was by being their manager, and which essentially was going into bars and saying, okay, can we have a gig? But I managed to get them playing twice a week and they made a bit of money and I, I loved that role. And then I sang in a choir and help build the plan. I had friends in theater and we did the cash flow plan. So I always seemed to be that business person bringing in a bit of structure. And in exchange, I got to live and touch a little bit of the, the creative magic that, that comes with working with artists. And as I got older, I just realized that, you know, who do I want to hang out with and what do I like doing? I like working on business plans and I want to hang out with artists. So very like in my late 40s went back to school got an MBA that was specific to innovation and change and research-led development which is very close to the artist way of doing things where you create and then you sell and develop these tools and now I work full-time with artists which which I love even if, when there's a pandemic and even when there's change and even when everything seems so tough that for me just opens up opportunities that maybe weren't there before. So it's a bit of a puzzle and um, that's where I am today. Mm -hmm. Well, I can certainly attest that as an artist who has worked with you, that, that the worlds of your business and your understanding of the creative field creates this beautiful um, amalgamation of information that is a really good place for an artist to get direction and get a path to go down because it is hard it is hard to figure out what you need to be doing and, and a little guidance goes a long way. Um, I think you kind of covered this, but like in your evolution of your career, what is your relationship to the artist? How do you view the artist in our current society? Well, I think I forgave the first one for breaking my heart. So I still, you know, I love artists and I absolutely start from this point that I think art is essential to our world. And sometimes people tease me and say, you're like a broken record. And I'm going to continue repeating this until my last dying breath. Art is not a luxury. Artists are noble. And I think there's a real disconnect in our world between the fact that so many people consume music. You listen to it in restaurants, when you're shopping, when you're doing your, your you know, grocery shopping or, or vacuuming or whatever, everybody when you're jogging, exercising. We know that art heals. We know that art uh, and music especially like, can galvanize a crowd to change society. We know that music soothes, we, makes people dance, it makes people fall in love. And I think somewhere along the way, we've forgotten to say, well, who's creating this music? And what power artists have Anybody who's sung in front of a crowd knows that they can create tears and laughter and social connection. And somewhere along the way, we forgot that. We've separated the artist from the art. And my relationship with artists is to say, I see you. You are important. 
And, you know, when I hear, oh, I go crazy when I hear uh, parents tell their kids, oh, you want to be a musician, what's your plan B? I go crazy. I, I wouldn't say to a kid who says, oh, I want to be a dentist, what's your plan B? Or I'm going to be an engineer, what's your plan B? Already, we set the stage for so many artists to think that they're going to fail by suggesting they need a plan B, B when being an artist is a profession. And there are a lot of ways of being an artist. You can be an artist in a commercial career that involves producing records and touring and all those things. But that's only one way you can be a musician and an artist. There is need for music in hospitals, in schools, in cultural centers. And so, you know, I like to come back to that and say to the artist, like, why are you doing the music? You know, what's your what for? And let's see how we, how we can get there. And I think my relationship to artists would summarize, deep, you know, with the word, which is just deep respect for the artist and for, for the world that they create for us and the way they relate the world to us and the way they document the world. I mean, we need artists. And so my relationship is to say, I will help the artist help us. So it's, it's, it, there's an emotional side for sure to my relationship with artists. Yeah, and uh, you can tell, eh? Yeah, it's beautifully said. I mean, um, it can be felt, absolutely. Now, your realm of expertise is really interesting, and I'd love for you to deep dive a little bit more into what is strategic planning and why an artist at any stage of their career should embrace strategic planning. For sure. Strategic planning, it just sounds so much like a, like a buzzword from business, you know, and I think there's a lot of fear. Artists, when you go to music school or when you're learning on the road with your friends, there's just so much energy that has to go to learning the craft, right? Just, I mean, I've been trying to learn guitar for oh, since I was 12. So we're looking at, you know, over 40 years and it's hard. And if you don't do it every day, you, you lose it. So because so much energy is put into the craft and then the creation, the business side kind of goes, you know, to the side, it seems foreign, but strategic planning is essentially saying, you know, what am I gonna do with this? And how am I going to, to, to get there? And if you don't know where you're going, you're going to turn in circles. So it's to say, you know, a strategy is to say, I, I'm drawing the path. So one thing I look at is where an artist is in their career. And, you know, we call it a mapping tool. And if you can visualize where you are in your career and the sort of career that you want, it's so much easier to make choices. Should I do this or this? So for example, when you start, a lot is on the craft and it's all bubbly and exciting. Oh my gosh, my first concert, you know, I just launched a song, maybe you know, you're there. So there's excitement and you're testing ideas and getting known. And then there's a second stage where now, okay, I'm doing, you know, a few shows, maybe have released a demo. People are starting to talk about me. And that level two, you start showcasing and you can taste the possibilities. And in, in business, we call this the proof of concept, which is basically, I have an idea and people seem to like it. The challenge is that just because people like it doesn't mean it's gonna work. And you see that on Dragon's Den or uh, the, shark, the shark show or whatever, like it's the same thing with artists. Okay, they like you what you're going to do with it so there's another stage of growth which is I can make a living out of this mm -hmm. and you work hard to find the formula between touring releasing getting funding where's your support you place all those things so that you're not wasting your time trying to sort things out strategic planning helps you know what you need to do when you need to do to get from here to here and in that stage three you're figuring it out and we get to what I call the proof of concept, which is, okay, I think I found a way making this work. And the goal is to get to that fourth stage where you're self-financing your career. You're not in this perpetual debt or feeling that you depend on people. You do shows, so you sell merch, you come out with records, so you get shows, they talk about the radio, so they come to your shows, you sell merch, and you create this beautiful cycle where money is no longer what's stopping you from moving ahead 
and you can really then focus on your life purpose and your projects and everything becomes easier. And to get to that stage is the goal of strategic planning for me. It's mm -hmm. to say you go from that without losing that beautiful excitement at the beginning. It's to understand in your map, you know, how you want to expand and who you want to take with you. Mm -hmm. So why yeah. should you, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say there's, there's something so daunting about planning the next phase as an artist, especially when, like you said earlier, we're focusing on the creative and it's amazing. Um, we'll dive into a little bit more, but the tools that you provide make it very accessible for the indie emerging artists to strategically plan. And it sounds like something that you need to have someone on your team to help you do. And it doesn't have to be as hard. And like you said, it's, it's such a high level business term, but there is a way of making this very accessible to the every artist. And uh, sure. I think I think that's something you do very well. And I look forward to um, deep diving into that a little bit more. And sorry, what were you going to say? Well, I was going to say, you just talked about something so important, like who's the team? And I'm going to say something that may tick off a few people, but like, I don't care. Um, I think that we are influenced and often discouraged by a very singular way of doing business, of measuring success. You have to do it this way. And I'd see, say even there's almost, I call it the American idolization of the process. Like, oh, I'm gonna get discovered, be famous, be rich. But that's only such a small group of people. And there are tens of thousands of artists and not everybody needs to be a Beyonce or a Justin Bieber. Like it is a myth to think that success is only measured in record sales and money. And because of that, we have this industry. So already with the artist, you have a choice. Do you wanna be part of the industry or not? You don't have to be. And if you're in the industry, then who are you going to work with? There are a lot of people in the industry who've been around for a long time and they are just as flummoxed as you and also suffered through the pandemic on how to move things. I have a book written in 2015 on the, the, the you know, business planning for artists. And the reference is to like a quarter million records sold. Like that's, and I don't know anybody selling a quarter million records in Canada, it's ridiculous. So when I meet industry people my age who've been in it for 20, 30 years, a lot of them are hustlers and they're, you know, trying to, everybody's struggling. And then I come in from this different world and I'm like, you're all, this is madness. The, like the whole economy and the whole industry is madness. It doesn't make any sense to me that we expect artists to lose money on tour to maybe sell an album that costs them their inheritance to produce. Like, the, you know, like all of it is madness. So I think if an artist can have the tools themselves to make the initial decision of the career they want, then they're in power to choose people instead of going to a showcase, hoping somebody falls in love with their music and then finding themselves almost slave to this person's idea of what they should be doing. And we hear about that over and over of a manager or an agent sort of lead or a record label kind of taking, taking over. But as an artist manager, I do understand too that if you're investing money and time in a project, you wanna have some sort of say in the matter so it becomes a bit complicated. So one of the things that's important for an artist, I would use as a, as a tool for the strategic planning is comparing your career to a little person, a little stick person. And if you can do that, it becomes really clear on what your career is. It starts with the heart. You got your heart, your heart. The art is the heart. If you don't have the art, you die. The heart stops beating. So that is you, the artist, your team, your producer, your musicians. Then you have the head and the head is there to plan. Where am I going? How am I gonna get there? And then you have two legs and the two legs are your two types of income. Typically the touring, your active income. I get up in the morning, I go, I make a show, get money, pay expenses, hopefully I have some left. But then you have the other leg, which is your the sale of um, the merch and your records, working maybe with a label for that. Then you have two hands. And one is like the hello world. And that's all those communication things, the social media, the marketing, the marketing plan, because you need to get people 
to your shows or to buy your records. And then there's the, the hand, which I call the get shit done hand, which is the admin and your legal and your grant writing. Well, that little body is essentially the rules that are part of a music career if you're going towards an industry into the industry. So when you're starting, you can do all of it. But then as your career gets bigger and bigger, if you're touring 150 shows a, a year, you can't physically, materially do all of those things well. And that's where you get the people coming in. You also have a little suitcase, which is all the songs you've created. And I find that so many artists are in the present moment future is hard but they forget the past mm -hmm. so you've got these songs that you've created 10 years ago but they're still valuable you can still flip them and make some money with them and work with a publisher for example so I think when an artist can sort of draw their career and say here are the things I'm doing stage one I get to be that person doing everything but as you expand who are you going to choose and pick and if you are choosing based on what you want to do, you will be fine. If somebody else is choosing or is mixing up roles, you thought somebody was going to help you book tours, but they're strategizing what, well, and you've got a plan. You've got to make sure you're, you're working with people who fit your needs. So I think those, you know, those strategic planning is understanding what needs to be done and then finding the people to do it, to get you from here to there. Mm -hmm. And I think an important part of kind of your business model when it comes to strategic planning is iterative strategic planning. Could you kind of unpack that for us a little bit? Sure. So the idea of iterative, that's another really good MBA uh, like uh, buzzword, right? So the iterative idea is that you have a plan, but you can keep revisiting it. And I think that one of the things that has happened, especially in Canada, is a lot of organizations we're asked to create these strategic plans. You see them in every province, the five-year plan, not-for-profits need them to get funding. And the idea that you can decide today in 2022, what you're gonna do in 2025, 26, up to 27, makes no sense to me. You need to be able to revisit your plan. But if you're always changing, you can quickly look scattered and disorganized and it's unsettling. So the idea of the plan is, it's a little bit like preparing a trip, right? It starts with your destination. Like, what are you doing this for? What's your for? What's the impact you think you might have on the world? Let's say five years from now. So I work in four different time zones. Five years from now, that's kind of the ultimate destination. And then the second thing is, how am I going to know I'm on the right path? And that's where you set your goals. And I, you know, Goals can be things like money in the bank, or it could be the sort of partnerships you want, the songs you want to release, but you kind of have a good idea of sort of the stops on the way. And I usually use a three-year window for that. I think beyond that is hard. One thing I do, and I think most people forget in planning is they want to sort of jump into the how, right? Like all these things. But before that, I think we need to look at the present. What are you working with? If you're going on a trip, with a Porsche, it's not the same thing as going with like a half broken truck with a camper at the back and you know, the dog, the tent and the screaming kids or whatever. So you have to know like, what are you, what are you working with? Do you come with already six albums or are you coming with a demo song or an iPhone recording? And there's, you know, there's value in all of those things but you have to be realistic. If you say to me, and I hear this, oh, I want to have three albums in three years, but I haven't written a song today. You, I don't know what you're going to have to do, like hide on an island or something. I, it's just, you've got to be realistic, you know? But if you're coming and you're saying, you know, I've written over the pandemic, I wrote 75 songs. I'd like to come out with an album. That's realistic. If somebody says, oh, I want 50,000, you know, followers on Facebook, not that young people use, seem to use that anymore, but you know, it still depends on the type of music you do, but you have like 400. Well, how are you going to get there? You better have a marketing plan. So we look at the present and then after, once you've done that, then you can look at your 18 month plan. I'm here. I want to get here. Just like when you're planning a trip. I am here in my little putt-putt car. 
I want to get to, you know, from Winnipeg to Calgary. Am I going to stop in Moose Jaw? Am I going to stop in Saskatoon? Who am I going to bring in the car with me? How much money do I need to put gas in it? Like, you've got to ask yourself those basic questions, which is how am I going to make the money? What investments do I need? Who am I going to bring along with me? Um, how am I going to reach the people I like, the marketing plan? And also one thing I bring in is the wellness plan. How am I going to feel good about this? How do I want to wake up every morning feeling happy and healthy? Because there's this myth that we're going to make it. That's the thing. Do you think they're going to make it? There is no magical it. This is the it, right? Like right now, this is your career. Are you happy? Are you healthy? And if not, what do you need to do for those things to happen? So you lay it all out and then you look at it and you say, is this making sense? Is it consistent? Is it clear? Is it meaningful? If yes, you're good to go. And then if things change, then iterative means you flip out the how to get to where you're going. Usually your what for doesn't change. Unless you go through a major life change, usually you know why you're doing the music. It's, you have to articulate it. But that anchors you. Sometimes you have to change your goals. And I can give an example. I worked with a band. They had a beautiful plan. They had shows lined up in September. And then one of the singers who, who plays guitar, one of the lead, uh, broke his arm. And it was like, oh my gosh, now we're going to have to cancel. And I, you know, I don't see problems. I see opportunities. I was like, well, before you cancel, where's the opportunity? And then he thought about it and he said, well, I've always been kind of intimidated by the lead singer and I kind of hold back, maybe without a guitar, this is my chance to just get front and center stage and we figure out this duo and make it a strong duo. And they hired this brilliant guitarist and after his arm healed, they kept the guitarist and he had a, the show was different. It was better. And that opened up more possibilities. Um, so that iterative, you know, you, you say, okay, I'm going to do the Western Canadian tour. And then you meet somebody at Breakout West who says, hey, come to Argentina in February. You're not going to say no. <laughs> so you can say, okay, well, that Western tour, I'm going to flip it. I'll do that in the summer when it's uh, okay, mosquitoes, but it's warmer. I'm going to Argentina as long as it feeds your wet for. But if, for example, if you were asked, hey, come uh, sing on a cruise, you know, cover songs and your deal is you've just got an album you want to launch it doesn't make sense you can say no but you're not agonizing about it at two in the morning like should I do it should I say yes should I do no you learn to listen to your gut and say okay I can run with this or mm, no it's not going to work for me this time thank you so that's sort of the the pillars of planning where do you want to go five years measuring your results what are you working with how do you get there and then adjusting those as you move forward and it can go pretty quickly mm -hmm. and I always like how you you just mentioned it how you use your gut so I think a lot of artists we go yeah of course we want the Junos and we want you know this tier of success um because it's almost like logically that's what we're told we need yeah. but I love how in your approach to planning you go how does that feel and it's like well actually um you know like being a international touring artist doesn't feel great for me because so I think that's a really important part of kind of that that check-in in in that strategic planning that you bring forward that I think a lot of us pass by because we think we should want these things but really we need to check in and see what what's right in regards to our well-being but also in our in regards to our own matrix of success and it is different for everybody so I mean I think you bring that forward very much, um, very well. And it's, I think it's appreciated because I don't think a lot of people in the industry go, how does that feel? You know? Well, <laughs> you know, and, and people, I mean, and that's not like loosey goosey stuff at all. No. You know, that is, there's one, I don't know how it happened, but somewhere along the way, artists were told that they weren't smart enough to read a spreadsheet or to do business planning and they should trust this person or that. Artists are just brain wise among the most intelligent people that I have worked with. You have to be to be able just the complexity of learning an instrument of structuring a song, but also, you know, 
really intelligent in terms of emotional intelligence of reading people of interacting and so you know I do think that's important and for the intuition I bring that back to my business uh, clients as well I think in society you know our gut is telling us what we need to do life is short if the pandemic's taught us something it's that so if you don't have to know why it's not working to know that it's not going to work. And sometimes with strategic planning, I'll work with an artist, have them sit in a chair, close their eyes, and we talk about the story. Now, it's always structured on where you're going. How does that feel? Oh, you're going to do a launch in November. Ooh, you're panicking. Let's go back. You're going to release. So I say launch because I'm French, so it's lancement, but I, I mean release. So then you release. Oh, well, maybe New Year. Oh. Oh, your heart's fluttering. Let's keep going. And the more you listen to yourself and, and validate the feelings that you have as legitimate, then you can get rid of the noise, get rid of the junk and listen to yourself. Then next stage is finding the words to explain what you see, but your discomfort is telling you what your boundaries are. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing too, and this is sort of core to the planning and the, the approach that we're, you know, we can work on together is there are people who have come and I have had massive debates within industry people where you're going to hear an artist, like it is a business, right? You're an artist. It is a business, which first of all, doesn't mean anything. Like, what does that mean? You know, like, but in business, traditionally you start with a need oh, these teenage girls need mascara or, you know, this grandmother needs this type of car or whatever. And then you do your research and development. What can we create for them? Then you have your marketing team. Let's go put the ads, sell them. And then you, or, so you manufacture it, then you sell it. That's kind of the traditional thing, right? Um, but artists are different. You don't start by saying, oh, I work with visual artists too. So like, oh, tourists want to buy little squares that are 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. So I'll paint a whole bunch of them so I can sell them. You know, visual artists is like, oh, I want to do a mural or a four by six foot painting. I'll start with the art, create, you do that research and production. And then after you can figure out like, who's this going to serve and how do I reach them? So we, we just take the order of steps and flip them around. If you, if you start with the art, then your integrity is intact. And there are just too many people in the industry are going to say, you know, you're saying, yeah, nice song, but can you make that song shorter because then it'll fit the radio. And I need from you, like, can you do like a slow love song? Because we're kind of looking for that this winter. It's kind of gloomy. Or, you know, I really want you to sing with this artist because that blend will be more popular. Well, now we're asking, I had one artist who was produced by somebody for th that the record label had chosen and came out with a beautiful record, but it wasn't her record. Mm -hmm. And she was embarrassed by it. Well, if it starts with the art and those choices about your producer and the sound you want to create and even the message and the way you want to do your shows, well, that's, you decide that. And a good manager will, help you understand the consequences of those choices or what opportunities are linked to those. But you start with the art. There are seven, almost 8 billion people on the planet. We can find a few people, the thousand people to drop the hundred bucks a year you need, you know, to, to, to earn a living. Um, but it starts with the art and it's still business, right? Like you're not doing anything bad. So mm -hmm. yeah, I get all sorts of people getting mad at me when I say that, but yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, our artists have to take their power back because That's you are right. powerful. You scare the rest of us, you know. Yeah, the art and the heart. Now you've you've mentioned your little stick figure. You've mentioned terms like the what for. Um, mm -hmm. Some of your kind of timelines when it comes to planning. These are all amazing nuggets from courses that I've taken on your artist.life page. Um, and I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about that. Um, if, if someone has heard something today that they're like, oh, I want to deep dive a bit more, where should they be looking and how can they kind of expand into their own personal planning with the help of some of the resources you have? Sure, and it's interesting because I'm actually going through the same sort of planning that a lot of artists are going through, which is 
how do I serve my community best in this post-pandemic era? So when, when the pandemic struck, the artist I was working with at the time just suddenly found their tours, like many of you, you know, just everything canceled. And the question was like, what am I gonna do and how do we navigate this? And I just jumped in and thought, okay, let's get people together on a webinar. And we created every week, there were one to three webinars on subjects. Artists would say, you know, how do I do a release or how do I prepare a crowdfunding or a live stream or how do I communicate with my team? So I get a theme and it would take from sort of the 25 years of business trading and pull some of those tools together. And I would say my artist.life is a lot, it's MBA level content that has been put in an artist context to share. So we recorded all of the webinars. Some are rough. Zoom wasn't the same thing three years ago, um, but all the webinars were, uh, most of them were put online. And so if an artist is interested, they can uh, sign up and uh, join myartist.life. There are lots of blog posts. Um, I had lots of opinions going, I still do, but I, ha I haven't written for a while, but I go through phases where it's just something strikes me and I say, oh, okay, got to write about it. Um, yeah, so they, they, uh, they can join as members. Right now there's a free membership, which gives access like when we do sort of hangs and, and the blogs. And there is a, a paid membership, which gives access to some of the courses and the rest. And if anybody's like, oh, that's like, I don't have the money for that right now. And it's, you know, they can contact Music Calgary. I'm friends with Calgary artists and they can get a quote to get on. I mean, that's, I want the artist to enjoy the tools. And then we have some, uh, what I call them done in one sessions. And those are the ones I really love, which is, okay, you followed the webinars. That's great. Now you feel like panicked because you have to do all these things, but then we come together in a done in one you've got the theory, let's do it. So I tend to do those around grant times, like, okay, we're all gonna prepare a grant together. We did one of those sessions and I think there were three or four of us at the same time working on grants. Everybody got their grant because we were all connected and kind of helping each other. Uh, we did one on building your brand. So that there can be sessions like that. And again, I invite artists, if you have a question, ask me and it's very easy to come together and work on it. Uh, my artist life is also artists helping each other. My vision was creating a community and my greatest joy in it is that artists from across the country and even the States got to, oh, we even had a couple from France, but got to meet each other and the advice artists give each other is absolutely gold. So that's something I want to encourage again too. I and welcome ideas for that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, um www.myartist.life correct just a sec www.myartist.life yes okay yeah it's <laughs> yeah. a dot life instead of a dot com that's right uh, yeah mm -hmm. and it's an amazing community I can attest to checking in and coming to the hangs and asking my questions and also feeling of service to other artists as well and um, that's what we're trying to do here at Music Calgary is just mm -hmm. create a community where people can lean on each other where we can provide opportunity and advice for each other. So this is incredibly insightful and thank you so much for your time. Um, we will be chatting to, with you again, coming up on our back on track uh, workshop. We have a live webinar with you on conference preparation, kind yeah. of in preparation for Breakout West that's coming to Calgary. Um, before we kind of resolve here, is there anything, any final thoughts you want to share with our artist or music Calgary membership or anyone watching this uh, video? Yeah, I do. The, the, I think there's one thing that's not being said right now and I'm gonna try not to cry, but I think this idea that, oh, when the pandemic's over, everything's gonna be fine and easy. I think there are a lot of artists right now having a really hard time because it's actually kind of hard right now. Like the world's a bit scattered and some of the energy is lost. The rules have changed. The financial pressures are still there. And I think there are a lot of, plus there's an incredible sense of grief. Plus as artists, you're reconnecting with audiences who are bringing all of their stories 
-hmm. and their expectations and their joy and their emotions. And almost every artist I've spoken to has talked about the burden, like the joy and the purpose and the resolve, but there is definitely a weight to carrying that and being witness to that while trying to process your own your own stories and your own, in some cases, grief and loss and your own struggles to rebuild. Mm -hmm. And I would say that this is the time to not give up and to, you know, to lean on music Calgary and to say, you know what, I need help figuring this out. I need, let's come together and be stronger together. This is not the time for everyone to, you know, jump into the touring, find themselves alone at two in the morning on the road thinking like, oh, I don't know why I'm doing this anymore. This is the time where we, you know, if we can keep that sense of community and a little bit like, okay, we've got this, um, but acknowledge that it's not, it's not easy mm -hmm. uh, for everyone. I think that's really important to say it and that we will figure this out because one thing hasn't changed in thousands of years, which is music's necessary. It's always been there. It's an essential need of humans. And now we just have to figure out how we're going to move forward so that artists can have happy, thriving lives with dignity and joy. Let's get the joy back. So that I think is really important to, to say out loud. Yeah. Thank you. That's, that's beautifully said. Um... Well, I know uh, you're juggling a million projects, and so I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with us. We can't wait for your conference prep um, discussion on September 21st. And for anybody out there, www.artistmyartist.life mm -hmm. uh, to learn more about some of the strategic planning tools and some of the things we discussed today. Thank you so much, Natalie. Oh, thank you, Jess. We'll chat soon. Yeah, sounds good. Bye-bye.